civil rights doesn't just apply to racial and ethnic groups, it also applies to uh, gender discriminations. So let's talk about women and their history uh, 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 in this country. Women's rights, the women's rights movement in America begins uh, really out of the abolitionist movement. As, uh, many women are fighting for the, to free the slaves, begin to realize that their legal status is not that much different than slavery. The legal doctrine of coverture deprived many women um, of, of any identity separate from that of their husbands. And in many states, women couldn't own rights, uh, own property, file for divorce, or testify in court or bring charges. Women like Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton organized a meeting at Seneca Falls, New York to discuss women's rights and put out the Seneca Falls Declaration of Sentiments and Resolutions, which was based on uh, the Declaration of Independence. This movement would eventually culminate in the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, or suffrage, uh, in 1920. Uh, now, I always point out to, to the, I have so many uh, bright, capable women in my classes, and I always like to point out that you live in a country that gave black men the right to vote in 1870 and white women the right to vote in 1920. And I think that's sometimes a perspective that we miss. The period after the passage of the 19th Amendment, uh, up until about 1960, we call the doldrums. And this is a period where women, uh, the women's movement kind of fades. Uh, uh, a lot of them felt that once they got the vote, then their issues would be resolved through elections. But as we're going to see, that wasn't really true. Also out of the same period, uh, the Progressive Era, we have the Equal Rights Amendment, which seeks basically a 14th Amendment that applies to gender, guaranteeing due process and equal protection and the like. Um, but that it was never passed. It came one state away from passing in the 1970s, uh, but failed to pass. Now, one of the reasons it didn't pass is because the Supreme Court uh, began to interpret the 14th Amendment to include gender. But it doesn't include gender, and the Supreme Court could easily interpret it the other direction, and then we would probably see a renewed discussion about an Equal Rights Amendment. But in the 50s and 60s, groups like the National Organization for Women and the National Women's Political Caucus organized and began fighting for uh, women's rights. You may remember from your U.S. history classes, uh, people like, um, oh, there's the doldrums. Um, you may remember people like, uh, 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 the feminine mystique for Dan and these, these other kind of calls for women to, to assert their, their place in society and their rights. The Supreme Court will play an important role in this, like, like we saw in the, the African American Civil Rights Movement. In cases like Reed v. Reed, now the reason these people have the same last name is this is a divorce case uh, settled in 1971. And it ruled that you cannot establish the rules of divorce, like who gets custody of the child or, or, or income distribution, things like that, based on gender. Uh, that you have to look at the facts of each individual case. And so this is the first time ever that they said that gender, uh, you have to question when gender is used as a basis of a public policy. In Craig v. Bourne in 1976, they create the medium scrutiny standard for, gen uh, for gender discrimination. Remember, it is easier to justify a law that is based on gender discrimination than racial discrimination, although um, harder uh, to justify a law based on gender discrimination for other than it is for other types of discrimination. And so in 1982, you see the, Supreme, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment falling uh, one state short of ratification. Women in the workplace. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 banned gender discrimination in, in employment. So it used to be there were jobs that were women's jobs, and only women got those jobs. There were jobs that, that were men's jobs, and only men got those jobs, uh, like teaching, for example. Um, uh, but that was banned in 1964. There, there has not yet been a Supreme Court ruling on wage discrimination, although the reality is, is that women make about three quarters uh, uh, as much as men do for the, same pay, for the same job at the same level of experience, even when you account for other factors like women taking time off for childbirth. Women still get paid less. Now, recently in 2009, President Obama, the first major law he signed into action was the Lilly Ledbetter law which made it easier for women to sue based on these grounds, although wage discrimination is something that's very real. And we have not seen the Supreme Court weigh in on this. Uh, women in the military, uh, right now only men are drafted, and only men serve in roles in the military that are primary combat, uh, primarily combat, so like a rifleman, let's say. But of course, women are in the military, and we've seen in the last couple of conflicts women getting involved in the action, although that's not their primary role. Uh, so, for example, we've seen some supply convoys where women uh, are serving in a quartermaster role and they've ended up in combat, like Jessica Lynch. Another issue is uh, sexual harassment. Um, 
uh, which is the idea of, of how men or women are treated in the workplace. This is prohibited by Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, uh, sexually harassing women. And um, let me get into that a little bit. The idea of sexual harassment is that if a workplace is perceived, it could reasonably be perceived as hostile or abusive based on your gender or some issue pertaining to, to sexuality, uh, then you can sue on the grounds of sexual harassment. Typically, we think of the boss hitting on an employee or something like that. But it could be that a woman goes to a job place and there are you know, inappropriate pictures of women up or, or a guy is, say, watching something on his work computer he really shouldn't be watching there. The, even though that may not be directed at that particular woman, um, that could make her feel uncomfortable and she could sue over that. In 96 and 97, we had a major scandal in the military where uh, women who were being uh, sexually harassed uh, by male commanders uh, ended up resigning their commissions and leaving the military uh, in disgrace uh, because of this. Uh, and unfortunately, we still have these cases popping up today. In Farragher, the city of Boca Raton in 1998, it ruled that an employer can be held accountable um, even for harassing acts that violate company policies. So let's say you work at a national restaurant chain and your boss sexually harasses you. You can sue not only your boss, but you can sue the entire chain, even if they have rules uh, against um, sexual harassment. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. We'll, we'll do this in the next video. Oh, I should mention one more thing with, about women. Title IX. Title IX is, is part of the Civil Rights Act uh, that says that Colleges have to spend an equal amount of money on men and women, uh, particularly in sports. And this is why you have to have an equal number of scholarships for men and women. Uh, so this has become a big issue um, because of football. Because there is no women's football, that's uh, uh, dozens of scholarships that are handed out to men but not women. So you see lots of colleges have sports that are women only, like say volleyball. Um, a number of schools will have a scholarship women's soccer program but not a scholarship men's soccer program, which is the case at the University of Texas, for example. Um, and this is to try to create that balance. And this has also come under a lot of criticism uh, uh, from, from uh, a number of, of, of places. But this did also create uh, the active and vibrant uh, women's sports programs in colleges. Um, and so that's been kind of a, a bone of contention uh, in some quarters.